Live in Interesting Times, Today's Stories Quake of Indonesia's Bali Sparks Panic Von der Leyen pledges Green Deal for Europe in her first 100 days Could foreign IS suspects be tried in northeast Syria? Man's best friend, the dogs who sniff out explosives in Kabul Democratic Congresswomen hit back at President Trump's tweets UK Prime Minister Hopeful slams Trump's tweet on Democratic Congress women. Mnuchin is not comfortable with Facebook's Libra. Plus, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says all people from every place on the globe must be permitted to practice their faith openly. Hello everyone, I am Sarah Nachman bringing you stories from around the globe. And this is Eagle News broadcasting from the East Coast, Virginia Beach, Virginia, USA. The United States Geological Survey said a strong earthquake struck off the Indonesian holiday island of Bali on Tuesday, causing residents to flee their homes and damaging several buildings. According to the USGS, the quake, which had a magnitude of 5.7, hit at 7.18 a.m. local time and was centered 50.9 miles southwest of the island's capital, Denpasar. The tremor, which was felt as far away as Banyuwangi on the neighboring island of Java, struck relatively deep at 91 kilometers and no tsunami warning was issued. Residents of Bali described panic as the quake hit. Denpansa resident Kumang Sudiani said, quote, I was carrying my baby when I felt the jolt. It was strong. I ran outside immediately and saw many people were already fleeing to the street. Photos circulated by Indonesia's disaster agency showed minor damage to shop fronts and temples on the predominantly Hindu island. The head of the agency's quake and tsunami division, Rahmat Triuno said in a statement, quote, We have received reports of damage such as fallen roof tiles and broken glass in several houses and offices. Bali authorities said more than 20 homes, schools, temples, and offices were moderately damaged by the tremor, predominantly in Badung district near the tourist hub of Kuta. No casualties have been reported in the disaster. Indonesia experiences frequent seismic and volcanic activity due to its position on the Pacific Ring of Fire, where tectonic plates collide. On Sunday, a powerful 7.3 magnitude earthquake hit the remote Maluku Island chain in eastern Indonesia, killing three people and damaging nearly 1,000 houses. Last year, a 7.5 magnitude quake and a subsequent tsunami in Palo on Sulawesi Island killed more than 2,200 people, with another 1,000 declared missing. On December 26, 2004, a devastating 9.1 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of Sumatra and triggered a tsunami that killed 220,000 across the Indian Ocean region including around 170,000 in Indonesia. European Commission President nominee Ursula von der Leyen pledged Tuesday to propose a Green Deal for Europe in her first 100 days in office, which would see a carbon-neutral continent by 2050. I will put forward a Green Deal for Europe in my first 100 days in office. I will put forward the first ever European climate law, which will set the 2050 target in law. Von der Leyen pledged the European Union will lead international ambition on fighting climate change when she delivered a speech to the Assembly in Strasbourg, France. At least 24 of the 28 EU member countries have so far pledged to set a target of a carbon-neutral Europe by mid-century where it emits no more greenhouse gas emissions than it absorbs. Eastern countries like Poland, Hungary, and Czech Republic have so far refrained from issuing such a pledge amid concerns about financing their transition away from their dependence on coal and fossil fuels. 
Von der Leyen said the EU must go beyond its 2030 goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 40 percent and compare to 1990 levels if it is to produce zero net emission by 2050. That goal was set under the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. Warnings have multiplied since 2015 when 195 countries meeting in Paris sealed a landmark agreement to keep temperature rises well below 2 degrees Celsius or 3.6 Fahrenheit compared with the pre-industrial levels. The UN Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, or IPCC, warned in October that warming is on track towards a catastrophic 3 or 4 degree rise. Researchers and academics attend an international forum on the Islamic State group in Amuda, northeastern Syria, months after the territorial defeat of the jihadists. Syria's Kurds are pushing for an international tribunal to try alleged jihadists detained in their autonomous region, but Western nations largely reluctant to repatriate their nationals or judge them at home. فهذه هذا الموضوع هو موضوع جدي وهو موضوع استراتيجي بالنسبة إلينا وسنعمل على تشكيل هذه المحكمة هنا بكل لقاءاتنا لم نرى أي طرف يعارض بدرورة تشكيل هذه المحكمة أو بدرورة محاكمة أولاء المجرمين تعاون بيننا وبين المجتمع الدولي طبعا لدينا كوادر ولدينا قضاة ونحن لدينا محكمة محكمة حماية الشعب هي تحاكم الأرهابيين والدواعش السوريين هذه المحكمة موجودة لكن عندما طلبنا تشكيل محكمة دولية طلبنا أن يتم تقديم العون والمساعدة بخصوص المسائل اللوجستية والقانونية دولية ذات أصيلة ويكون هناك قضاء مشترك قضاء قضاء محليين وقضاء دوليين بالإضافة إلى محاميين دوليين من دول التي لديها مواطنين انتسبوا إلى انتموا إلى تنظيم داعش الإرهابي لدفاع عن هؤلاء المجرمين وسيكون كل هذه المحاكم مفتوحة للإعلام فهذه هي المحاكم الدولية the Kurds run an autonomous administration in the northeast of Syria, but it is not recognized by Damascus or the international community. This brings complication for the legal footing of any justice mechanism on the Kurds' territory and the international cooperation required to establish one. With Western nations largely reluctant to repatriate their nationals or judge them at home, could foreign IS suspects be put on trial in northeast Syria? After years of fighting IS, Syria's Kurds hold around 1,000 foreign men in jail, as well as some 12,000 non-Syrian women and children in overcrowded camps. Almost four months after Kurdish-led forces backed by the U.S.-led coalition seized IS' last scrap of land in eastern Syria, few have been repatriated. The Kurdish authorities say they are seriously exploring how to set up an international tribunal and invited foreign experts to discuss the idea at a conference it is hosted earlier this month. The dogs at Kabul's mine detection center are in training for a life-or-death mission, finding explosives in a country where hidden mines, bombs, and weapons routinely kill. There are about 200 dogs at the Afghan capital's Mine Detection Center, or MDC, a non-governmental group raising the animals from the rambunctious pups into a disciplined force and teaching handlers how to work with the canines. A common sight around the Afghan capital, explosive-sniffing dogs are deployed at checkpoints and government facilities where they are an important tool in combating the flow of homemade bombs being smuggled into Kabul. کیستاگ نباشه ما بسیار وظیفه من بسیار خسته کنند چهار میشه ما سری سگای خود اتیبار داریم که اینو باشه که بیکن وظیفش میتونیم ما بالای کاری نه اتیبار داریم. Handlers demonstrated how they train dogs to hone in on particular scents, explosives mainly, but also narcotics by using a special carousel of identical metal canisters that conceal different smells. Each time a dog correctly identifies a target smell, the handler gives it a rubber chewy ball to chomp on as a reward. 
بسیار رابطه باید محبتانه داشته باشه که یک مسلی یک دوست یا امرای یک رفیق یا امرای یک طفل که می باشی با یک قسم باید امرای سگ باشی بسیار محبت امرای سگ داشته باشی که تا سگ امرایت محبت کنه و امرایت آشنا باشه و هر چیزی که بخوایی او سگ برات اجرا میکنه It takes about two years to train an explosives dog, and the process is intense for both the handler and the canine. The animals at the MDC are all German Shepherds or Belgian Malinois. The dogs, it's very effective and efficient to search for explosive, for narcotics, and for, uh, and for mine action as well. Handlers get about $500 a month for their dangerous work, not a bad wage in Afghanistan, as well as life insurance and retirement benefits. Dog handler Sebi Hula Amin said explosives are, quote, a hidden enemy, so all the time I have a little fear in my heart. <laughs> After the MDC was established in 1989, the dogs mainly came from the Netherlands, but now most are local after breeding started here in 1994. More than 1,100 dogs have completed the training. The canine's initial mission was to hunt for landmines, a vital task in a country left strewn with a devastating weapons during the war with the Soviet Union in the 1980s. But the dog's use tapered off in recent years following a series of incidents where they missed explosives, sometimes causing casualties as people returned to areas thought to be cleared. According to Abdul Kudo Zai, head of operations of Afghanistan Dictorate of Mine Action Coordination, dogs can be a useful mine detection tool if properly managed. But in several areas contaminated with anti-vehicle mines, some agencies failed to use the canines correctly or handlers were improperly trained, leading to sloppy practice and areas of terrain left dangerous. Kudu Zai said whether it was fault of the dog handler or the dog was not properly trained, the mine will be missed and the negative consequences will be borne by civilians. Dogs can still be used to sweep large areas deemed low threat, he said, noting that procedures are currently being revised and new standards will be introduced in about a year. At the MDC, handlers insist dogs are a better tool for finding mines than mechanical detectors, as they can sniff the explosives and non-metallic devices. Up next, Democratic Congress women hit back at President Trump's tweets. UK Prime Minister Hopefuls slams Trump's tweets on Democratic Congress women. Mnuchin is not comfortable with Facebook's Libra. Plus, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says all people from every place on the globe must be permitted to practice their faith openly. Eagle News will return in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. You are watching Eagle News. U.S. President Donald Trump comes under fire from Democrats and even some members of his own Republican Party after launching an extraordinary xenophobic attack on four progressive Democratic Congress women. Trump drew fresh accusation of racism Monday after he attacked four ethnic minority Democrats in Congress, telling them to go back where they came from. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. But if you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York, Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, and Rashida Tlaib of Michigan held a press conference after being criticized by U.S. President Donald Trump. Ocasio-Cortez says that Trump challenges their loyalty to the U.S. in order to avoid challenging and debating the policy. Weak minds and leaders challenge loyalty 
to our country in order to avoid challenging and debating the policy. This president does not know how to make the argument that Americans do not deserve health care. He does not know how to defend his policies. So what he does is attack us personally. He's launching a blatantly racist attack on four duly elected members of the United States of House of Representatives, all of whom are women of color. This is the agenda of white nationalists. While Trump denies he is racist, he has a long history of political pandering to white suspicions about other ethnic groups, which many believed helped him win electoral victory in 2016 and which could be important in the election next year. During their last debate before next week's announcement of who will succeed Prime Minister Theresa May, Candidates to British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt both condemned U.S. President Donald Trump's tweets, urging the four progressive de Democrat Congresswomen, women of color, to go back to the countries they come from. I think the relations between the, the U.K., I've said what I said about the relations between the U.K. and the U.S. are incredibly important. But uh, when you, if you're the, the leader of a great multiracial, multicultural uh, society, you simply cannot use that kind of language about sending people back to where they came from. I have uh, three half Chinese children and if anyone, and they're British citizens born on the NHS, and if anyone ever said to them, go back to China, I would be utterly appalled. And I would say something else, it is yeah. totally un-British to do that. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin insisted that he isn't comfortable with Facebook launching its own digital currency, Libra. He said it could be misused by money launderers and terrorist financiers, as others cryptocurrencies have been. The Treasury Department has expressed very serious concerns that Libra could be misused by money launderers and terrorist financiers. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin have been ex exploited to support billions of dollars of illicit activity like cybercrime, tax evasion, extortion, ransomware, illicit drugs, human trafficking. We will not allow digital asset service providers to operate in the shadows and will not tolerate the use of the cryptocurrencies in support of illicit activities. Mnuchin said Facebook must meet a very high standard before it moves ahead with its planned digital currency, Libra. Mnuchin said U.S. regulators have already expressed concern to Facebook about the plan for a global cryptocurrency, noting that these kinds of virtual coins have in the past been associated with money laundering and illicit activities. Treasury has been very clear to Facebook, Bitcoin users, and other providers of digital financial services that they must implement the same anti-money laundering and countering financing of terrorism, known as AML-CFT safeguards, as traditional financial institutions. As the President has said, Bitcoin is highly volatile and based on thin air. We are concerned about the speculative nature of Bitcoin and will make sure that the U.S. financial system is protected from fraud. Facebook last month unveiled its plans for Libra, widely regarded as a challenger to dominant global player Bitcoin. Expected to launch in the first half of 2020, Libra is designed to be backed by a basket of currency assets to avoid the wild swings of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Mnuchin said the U.S. Treasury welcomes responsible innovations that can improve the efficiency of the financial system, but added, our overriding goal is to maintain the integrity of the financial system and protect it from abuse. Comfortable um, with Facebook launching the currency if they no, do I, it I in the right way. I, I didn't say I was comfortable with them launching a currency. If, you want, if they launch it in the appropriate and in a safe way in terms yeah, of... Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not comfortable security. today. So let, let me just be careful, as I've said. They and others have a lot of work to do before they get us comfortable. 
He said U.S. regulators have met with Facebook officials on this question and how Facebook can protect against the new virtual coin being used for criminal activity. The Treasury chief said this is indeed a national security issue. Facebook, he added, must implement safeguards against the use of Libra for money laundering and terrorist financing and comply with other financial regulations. Commenting on Facebook's claim that Libra could lower costs and help people without access to traditional financial services, Mnuchin said, that's fine, but they've got a lot of work to do to convince us they can get to that place. Mnuchin's comments echoed concerns voiced by Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and the regulators around the world, as well as by lawmakers set to open hearings this week on the plan by Facebook and its partners in the Libra project. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo spoke at a religious freedom summit at the U.S. Department of State in Washington, D.C., saying, quote, all people from every place on the globe must be permitted to practice their faith openly in their homes, in their place of worship, and in the public square and believe what they want to believe. Speaking before 100 foreign delegation with more than 1,000 representatives, Pompeo welcomed attendees from civil society and from Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Falun Gong, and other secular backgrounds. Pompeo assured the delegation America's commitment to religious freedom will never waver. Pompeo said America stands, quote, with you and for you in each stage of this fight. That is today's Eagle News. Join us again tomorrow for stories that matter to you. Visit our website at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Eagle News and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Eagle News. Thank you for watching. I am Sarah Nachman and I am one with 25.